Hi there, Scott Hamilton, Rockfile, back with another podcast review for your ears. Going to be talking about the 1988 animated film, Akira. It's spelled Akira. How Japanese pronounce R is kind of more like a DT kind of thing, so it's Akira. Um... This was a movie that changed the world. <laughs> it was made for five and a half million dollars. Uh, it was hand animated, most of it, because this was 19, well, it was made, you know, in the years preceding 1988 release. Um, a lot of hand animation, a little bit of computer generated stuff, but at the time they weren't doing a lot of that, where a lot of today's anime is 100% computer generated. This movie was rated R. This movie proved that. Uh, Animation could be for adults that could cross into different countries and the themes would be relevant, that kind of thing. It opened the doorway. In the United States back in the day, um, the only anime we got was like Speed Racer and things that were heavily edited and put together, like the Robotech series, which is actually two or three different Gundam shows put together. Um, And it wasn't until after Akira that we started getting unedited anime on TV, video. Uh, Back in the day, we used to collect on VHS. That was the best way you could do it. Viz Video and a couple other companies were importing this stuff like crazy. It was horribly expensive compared to regular movies at the time. And I was at a a, a, a sci-fi Dungeons & Dragons type convention. It may have been the first Dragon Con. Um, I was a dungeon master to give you my Greek geek cred in the first two Atlanta Dragon Cons. And uh, they had these merch rooms. And this was the first time in my life I'd seen things like this. And this VHS guy, this seller of movies, had this widescreen VHS of Akita. Um, Not many things were out in widescreen back in the day. And to see an animated film that was actually on film, widescreen, I, I bought it immediately. And watched it, and my little mind was completely blown. Watching it again tonight, my mind was blown again. Um, I own three copies of this on Blu-ray. I have the original Blu-ray, the remastered Blu-ray, the second remastered Blu-ray that came in a steelbook. And then in 2020, they released it on 4K, and Funimation made a mistake, and there was no HDR on the disc. So they did a replacement program, and it just got re-released this month. So the version you will buy now um, will be fully remastered, going back to the 35 millimeter interpositive. Um, it's got a great Dolby mix, uh, either in Japanese or English. And two Blu-rays, the movie, and then a bunch of extras. It's got a lot of extras. No extras on the 4K. The movie looks incredibly stunning. Um, This is a movie I've seen in just about every incarnation that's been over the years. This blows it away. It's in Dolby Vision HDR. Uh, It's HDR 10 compatible if you don't have Dolby Vision. And it just... The only other anime movie I have in 4K is Ghost in the Shell, which looks incredible. Um, I think this looks even better. It, it, I've never seen the movie look this colorful. Um, They've really restored it. It looks like it came out yesterday. Um... The movie's not dated at all for a movie that came out in 1988, to be perfectly honest with you. It was cyberpunk and supposed to take place a little bit in the future, and they nailed it. A um, little dystopian stuff in a, in a burned-out Japan that didn't really happen, that kind of thing. But other than that, uh, the themes and everything resonate today. It's a little long. It's just over two hours. I think it's two hours and four minutes. And it... it it's one of those animated movies that goes right up to the credits and the credits are like two, three minutes. I mean, it just it fills up the whole time. There's a lot of story. Um, there's a bit of a mystery. I don't want to do any spoilers, even though this movie's been out forever. Um, a lot of people today haven't seen it. It's not readily available in streaming services. It's just, yeah. But honestly, a, there were many people who didn't understand this movie to this day don't understand this movie and that's great it still opened the doorway for wow we can get animated movies that are made like this it wasn't disney <laughs> you know that kind of stuff now these days obviously we're flooded with anime and you've had uh, cable networks showing it every night for the past 20 years and uh, you can get blu-rays and even 4k's 
Weathering with you is out on 4K. That's one to pick up. But anyway, this movie is the story of basically some teen kind of biker punks who get involved with a government conspiracy and some experiments and and, uh, taking the human race to a new level and mental powers and... um, Themes of alienation, themes of of youth, and and there's, I mean, there's this, you could watch this movie over and over and over and get more out of it every time. Again, it's not for everyone. It's two hours long, and it's pretty weird until you know what's going on. Um, Things like giant teddy bears animate and milk comes out of their seams, and you're like, what the hell is going on? But it makes sense later in the movie. This was by far the best experience watching the movie since I originally saw it. I haven't seen it in a few years. Um, I now have the TV and the audio system to really, really take advantage of it and the and the 4K player to really see uh, the movie as this restoration intended. And it looks fantastic. It sounds great. The... English 5.1 sounded better than the Japanese. Well, not better, louder. Um, I had to really crank up the Japanese. The subtitles are very clear in 4K, by the way. Um, But that was interesting to note. The two-channel stereo mix that was English was also pretty good. Um, But yeah, so it was interesting to note that the English version was louder. All in all, if you've ever had an interest in anime and and cyberpunk-type movies and things that may take you more than once to watch to fully get then akira or akira is definitely worth your time it's a classic it's a modern classic um katsushiro otomo did it uh, best thing he's done uh, i'd watch it again anytime if somebody comes over and oh, you've never seen this again you have to be prepared it's two hours and, and animated movies just feel longer when they're long than a standard movie Normal movie, two hours, you don't think much about it. But an animated movie that's two hours, really. Because a lot of Disney movies are at 80 minutes. A lot of the uh, How to Train Your Dragon movies are under an hour and a half. And and because of young attention spans. Well, some adult attention spans aren't as long as this movie. But it's worth it for the payoff. And and then to really digest it and what it really means at the end. It's, I don't know, it's pretty epic. Um so, yeah, if you get a chance to pick up the 4K version, that's the only way to see this movie going forward. It's one of my all-time favorite movies, and I'm very happy to have the new 4K version. It it looks spectacular. Lots of great extras about the making of it and behind the scenes. Um, it's just a quintessential classic that should be in your library if this is your kind of thing. Check it out. I'm Scott Hamilton. I'm Rock File. This was a quick review. Not so much to get into the depth of the movie. It's been out forever, and there's a lot smarter people out there than me that have written long, long. Go Google it. There's all sorts of uh, philosophy and reviews and things that break it down, and um, feel free to go down that rabbit hole. But watching the new 4K, it was just spectacular looking, and I had to say something about that. So there you go. Have a spectacular day. Thank you so much for listening. Um, Got some new stuff on Patreon if you want to check that out. And have a marvelous day. 